Hello everyone, my name is Ian. You're watching Big Rock Moto, your home for the most detailed motorcycle reviews on the net. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you appreciate this kind of in-depth content. Let me take you back in time about 20 years or so to around the year 2003. KTM introduced a bike called the 950 Adventure. It was a radical new adventure bike and it blew away all the other previous adventure bikes in terms of its off-road capability. Now let's fast forward to 2019. KTM releases the 790 Adventure with a radical new fuel tank design, as you can see here, designed to centralize the mass of the bike around the roll axis of the bike for better handling. And almost everybody who tested the 790 when it first came out said it was definitely the best handling uh, multi-cylinder adventure bike ever produced. Then fast forward again to 2021, KTM updates the bike. They go from a 790 to an 890. They have to meet Euro 5 requirements. They give us a bigger engine with more torque. So personally, after owning a 790 Adventure R when they first came out, selling that to get something else, then having the Husqvarna Norden 901, which I made a series of videos on, deciding eventually to sell that because I wasn't happy with the suspension and the wind buffeting. When the chance came up to buy a low mileage pristine 890 Rally with the WP Pro suspension, which I'm about to talk about, I jumped at the chance. KTM only made 700 of these 890 rallies for the entire world, and only 200 of them came here to the USA. So you can imagine how hard it is to find them to come up for sale. And all these bikes, when they were new, they sold under a pre-order reservation program. So the question is, what makes this bike special? And is it really, as some have claimed, the most capable mass-produced multi-cylinder adventure motorcycle ever made? Today, we're gonna to discuss what sets this bike apart. We're gonna take a tour of the bike. I'm gonna do my usual drop and lift test. I'll show you the riding position. We'll get it out on the highway. We'll get it in the dirt. We'll show you all that footage, talk about how it is to ride. Then we'll come back here, we'll talk about the brutally honest pros and cons to this 790 slash 890 platform. And then of course, we'll have some final thoughts. So with that, let's go for a ride. All right, uh, seat height and riding position on the 890 Rally. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of things that affect this whole equation. What seat are you using? Are you using the factory Rally seat? Uh, the 890 Venture R comes with its own unique seat, and I have the KTM Power Parts low seat, which is three quarter inches lower than the seat on the R, and about an inch and a half lower than, this, than the Rally seat, which comes stock on this bike. The other thing is, how much preload do you have in your suspension? So all that affects it. Um, but when I bought this bike with the Rally seat and the preload jacked way up, it was pretty crazy. It was like a 36, 37 inch seat height. Uh, right now I'm probably looking at around a 34 and a half inch seat height with this seat on it, which is about what a standard R is with the seat on that bike. So let me jump on and show you the riding position. And keep in mind my specs, I am uh, 100 and, I'm sorry, 200 pounds or about 90 kilograms. I am uh, 180 centimeters or about five foot 10 and I have a 32 inch inseam. Now, <laughs> You can see that there's a couple things going on here. One, these pegs on the pegs on this bike really get in the way of me putting my foot down. They're kind of in an awkward position. The other thing is this bike is very tall, even with this low seat on it. It's extremely tall. It makes it very uh, tricky for me. I have to be very careful where I stop. If I try to put a foot down and low in like a depression area where the ground's low, there's not gonna be any ground there. So I'm very conscious of how I come to a stop on this bike. Uh, the, the riding position is all day comfortable and I've ridden this bike all day, multiple different touring rides I've done with it. It's an incredibly comfortable bike to ride all day. Plenty of leg room, plenty, you know, bars are in a perfect position. No complaints from that aspect. All right, you know, we have to do it. Uh, the drop and lift test. So the KTM 790 and 890 platform is an interesting bike when it comes to this because You've got the wide gas tanks that sit along the bottom. And I've found from experience that that actually helps the bike from falling all the way flat, makes the bike easier to lift. Also, the mass is more centralized down low on this bike. So it's for a big adventure bike, it's one of the easier ones to lift up when you do have some sort of an accident. You can see the handlebar is actually not even contacting the ground. So actually, let me grab the camera and kind of show you how the bike's hitting the ground, then we'll lift it up. All right, you can see here, it's kind of hitting the luggage rack a bit uh, that I have. And it's also, you can see, definitely contacting the fuel tank. Handlebars 
or the handguard's not even touching, kind of surprising. Let me show you from this angle from the front. So you can see kind of what I'm talking about here in terms of how it falls over. There's obviously multiple ways to lift motorcycles. There's videos out there on that. The main thing is protect your back. Don't bend your back. And if you feel your back starting to hurt at all, stop what you're doing. <laughs> so on this bike, I think I'm gonna try deadlifting it from the handlebar. And if that doesn't work, I'll just lift it kind of uh, with my butt against the seat. So. So the deadlift was okay. It's still heavy. I mean, it's almost 500 pounds, uh, but it's not bad. I can't do that on a lot of the bikes in this category. I have to do a more complicated lift using more of my legs. So that's one of the advantages of these A90s. Um, centralized mass makes the bike easier to lift up. All right, let me walk you through the important specs of this bike, the ones you care about, and then we'll take a tour around the bike, kind of show you all the interesting features of this rally model. So let's start by covering the engine really quick, because that's what most people care about a lot. So the engine is an 889cc parallel twin engine, kind of hidden here under the gas tanks. It's a 13.5 to one high compression engine, so you do need to use 91 octane or premium fuel. Power output, you've got 105 horsepower or 78 kilowatts at 8,000 RPM and 74 foot-pounds of torque or 100 Newton meters of torque coming in at around 6,500 RPM. Let's back up a second to some of the important specs. So the wet weight fully fueled up with this bike with a full 5.3 gallons or 20 liters of gas is about 463 pounds according to KTM, making it very, very light in this category if you consider how much gas it's carrying. Now, what did this bike cost when it was new? So KTM sold these bikes on the pre-order for $20,000 US. And of course you have to add on tax, licensing, dealer fees, mark up all the stuff that dealers normally charge. So a lot of people ended up paying closer to twenty-three dollars to $25,000 out the door for these bikes. Of course, we have to talk about the suspension. That's one of the key features of KTMs, but especially for this rally model. So you can see here, WP Explore Pro closed cartridge cone valve front forks. These front forks are some of the most advanced motorcycle suspension forks ever produced. They have the cone valve technology, which basically means that they're plush, uh, but they're also firm when you have a bigger, fat, higher speed hit, and they have a lot of adjustment capability. These things have 10.6 inches, or 270 millimeters of travel. So the rallies come with 270 mils of travel, which makes it the most suspension travel ever equipped on any factory adventure bike. Let's take a look at the rear suspension here for a minute. So of course it's a monoshock design, but it's a totally different shock absorber than you get on the R models. You can see here you've got low speed and high speed compression adjustments with a ton of adjustment. There's like 40 clicks on these things. And the difference between this and the R suspension, in my opinion, after owning the R, is that when you make adjustments to this, you actually feel it right away. The adjustment clickers actually work. You also have a preload adjuster here, which you kind of need to use a high speed drill for or it takes forever and a lot of preload adjustability and you have a rebound damping adjustment here and it's the same travel as the front 10.6 inches or 270 millimeters what are some other specs that we care about? So the brakes, the brakes are very, very strong. They're KTM branded brakes. I think they use Brake Tech, uh, I'm not sure, one of those companies, but they're four pistons on each side. So you get a total of eight pistons on your front brakes and they're 320 millimeter rotors. So a lot of braking power on this bike. The brakes are have a very good feel and they're also very, very strong. And of course, back here, you've got a twin uh, piston caliper and a pretty large rear disc here as well. And keep in mind that this disc protector is from Vanash Motorsports. That is not a factory item. You can see here on the wheel set, DID Dirt Star wheels. These are not the wheels that you get on the 890 Adventure Standard or the R model. These are an upgraded, stronger wheel set. They're narrower than those bikes have and they have tubes inside them. The reason for that is because hardcore off-riders actually prefer to run tubes. The tubeless wheels, without getting into details, have some problems for very serious hardcore off-road use. So they are using the tubes on this bike. The other thing I wanna note about this bike is the ground clearance. It's a massive 12 inches. So you get an entire foot of stated ground clearance, which means that this bike can clear tremendous obstacles for an adventure bike. 
One more thing going back to the suspension. What do you not notice here? What you don't notice is a suspension linkage. So you have no suspension linkage hanging down below the bike to catch on obstacles. It uses KTM's PDS, a progressive damping system. The shock mounts directly to this upper mount on the swing arm. There's no suspension linkage. And it's a unique design that KTM has been using for quite a while. We already talked about the fuel capacity, uh, 5.3 gallons, 20 liters, and this bike gets very good fuel mileage. I get around 55 to 60 miles a gallon in mixed riding, even with some higher speeds included in that. So I can go between 250 and 300 miles, or about up to 480 kilometers, on a single take of gas, which is really, really impressive, and one of the best features of this bike, in my opinion. So let's take a tour around the bike now that we've covered the specs. So I've got a Motaz Dual Venture front tire. I love that front tire. I've talked about that in other videos. Uh, you can see that the, the graphics, the uh, bodywork color scheme is all different on the rally versus the standard bike. I think it's it's pretty busy. It's, there's a lot going on, but I, I like it. It looks really in your face. You can also see that the rally uses clear, uh, clear fairings here instead of the tinted versions you get on the standard bike. So it's just makes it look that much more unique. I have KTM's headlight protector here to, to protect this expensive LED headlight. I wish they had LED blinkers, but they give you the cheap incandescent blinkers. Adjustable windshield, it's in a high position now. I've also got the Pui spoiler in here, which I'll link below. Love that, it really cleans up the airflow. And I have a Rottweiler, uh, from Rottweiler Performance, an adjustable windscreen knob, so I can just unscrew this by hand without tools and put the windscreen in either of its two positions. Coming around to the side of the bike here, I've got the AXP Racing skid plate. It's a heavy duty, thick plastic. It covers the sides of the gas tank, provides coverage all the way back under the exhaust and catalytic converter. And it's just a very good item, very good upgrade for this bike. And it doesn't mount to the engine. So if you take an impact on a skid plate, you're not gonna break your engine. It just mounts actually to some frame mounting points, actually where they would uh, mount the factory center stand if you did have that. I know this is not a video on aftermarket parts, but I do have different foot pegs. These are from Vanash Motorsports. I think these are called their adventure foot pegs. Uh, you have these uh, dowel pins you can adjust. I, I really, really like these foot pegs and they're lower to give me more leg room. I've also got their brake uh, tip lever there. A lot of cool bling on this bike, right? I also have a Wings exhaust. So the Wings exhaust is a, <laughs> the Wings is a great exhaust manufacturer. Full titanium, very lightweight, sounds awesome, has adjustable inserts to tune the sound. So I really like having that. Uh, you can see here the side of the engine, oil sight glass, passenger pegs. Now the seat I have, this is the KTM Ergo Low seat, which they sell for these 890s. The bike is extremely tall, as we've talked about, so this helps me reach the ground better. I also have the rally seat, but that uh, just makes the bike incredibly tall in stock form. Coming around the back here, you can see I've got a Motaz Rouse rear tire. I've got Tusk luggage racks from my Tusk Olympus saddlebags, which I have a video on. I've got a Perrin Moto. Uh, this is their larger rack. Perrin Moto makes the best luggage racks, in my opinion, so very, very nice to have that. I really like how they did the rear end on this bike. The LED tail light is very sleek and compact. They didn't have the license plate hanging down. They did cheap out and give you incandescent signals, which I've talked about. Coming on to this side, not too much more to talk about. You can see the uh, drive chain set up here, the chain adjusters. We've talked about the rear shock. You can see the catalytic converter in there. And then what else? The foot peg hangers, uh, these often come loose on these bikes. I don't know why, but they have this uh, this mount here to the frame and it's just something that comes loose all the time. I've got a Vanash uh, case saver. If the chain were to break and come off, this protects the engine from being destroyed by a flinging drive chain. So that's a nice thing there. I've also got a KTM side stand foot. I've got some wires here for my heated uh, heated jacket and also a battery tender or other accessories that I want to put on. Suspension adjustment that we talked about. Now let's talk a second about controls and things. So a few things I've changed. I have the fast flex bars on. They uh, actually flex up and down and uh, provide a lot of absorption for off-road terrain. I love these bars. At $400, they're a very expensive upgrade, but it is something that I do like to have. I also have the um, Barkbusters handguards and the Tusk flex bar adapters on those. The angle's not quite right, but it works. I also have KTM Power Parts uh, anodized adjustable folding levers for the clutch and brake, which are kind of nice. Clutch adjustment there. It's a cable clutch, which is a cheap, stupid thing they did. They should have given a hydraulic clutch on this bike. I hate how the clutch engages on this bike. It's one of the biggest downsides of it. Um, you can see cruise control switch here. Uh, this is some of your menu controls. I'll show you that in a second. Turn signal horn. There's no hazard lights on this 
this bike. I guess KTM thinks that you don't need hazard lights. I don't know why they don't include that start stop button over here. I also have a Scott's steering stabilizer. This is like a $700 upgrade with the, with the uh, mount here, the vibration isolating mount that they have. Very expensive upgrade, but for off-road riding, these things are worth their weight in gold. Now I've got my GPS mounted here using a Moto Pumps uh, swiveling adjustable mount, Garmin Zumo GPS, which fits perfectly there, integrates very well to the bike, and of course I've got it wired in to hard power. I have also have KTM's heated grips, which integrate into the uh, bike's computer. All right, let's take a look at the dashboard of this bike. So you can program these uh, items here. So I've got trip computer, fuel consumption, battery voltage, and fuel range. You can customize what you wanna see here. I also have the display in the dark mode. I prefer the black background with the white letters. I just think it's a lot better. You can change that again in your settings. And as a shift light, you can change that. They give you a lot of customization potential here. Uh, now, what else do you've got? You've got a clock, you've got a temperature gauge, you've got a fuel gauge. Now the fuel gauge is weird on these bikes. People complain about it. It only reads below half a tank. So once you get to half a tank, then it starts going down. It has to do with the weird shape of the gas tank. It is still usable. It's just something that people complain about a lot. Temperature gauge, uh, ride mode, ABS mode, traction control mode, uh, indication for heated grips. So that's nice to have. And a gear position indicator, tachometer and speedometer and then dummy lights on the side. Now you can go in here to the menus and change a lot of this stuff if you want. It also has connectivity for your phone and navigation, which I'm not showing now. Uh, if I wanna use my, so, oh, hold on. So let me show you the quick select button. So you can program the up and down to be quick select. So what I have is if I press the up button, I have that program to the ride mode for a quick select. The down button, I have my ABS mode. So very fast and easy for me to go in and change that. And I had, I had made a video years ago about the electronics on the 790. A lot of that same stuff still applies. This was fun. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Just keep it rolling, keep it rolling. I think there's a hard left turn here. <laughs> oh, this is a tricky turn. So I would say that this is the only adventure bike I've ever ridden that is so good off-road that I think it's almost a danger to me, like it's a threat to me because I just want to ride faster and faster and faster. I want to jump it. I want to hit things at ridiculous speeds because the chassis and the suspension feel, they feel so far ahead of my riding ability. It, it's like I'm riding up here on a cloud above the terrain. Uh, I mean, the way the suspension copes with huge bumps and huge G-outs and even the rocks and the chattery terrain. Obviously, I've slowed down now so I can talk on film, but this bike is so beyond my riding ability and it gives me room to grow as a rider. But it's also incredibly fun and engaging to ride because it truly, truly lives up to its name of being being that rally bike uh, you could rally this like i honestly feel that you could take this motorcycle the way it is and race it in something like dakar and probably do really well like that's the level of the suspension and the chassis on this bike and of course the electronics are amazing the brakes are amazing i mean I just, I'm always excited to go out for a ride on this bike. And the thing is that, sadly, because I ride so many bikes now, I'm jaded, you know, I'm skeptical. I'm, 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 I can see the problems with everything right when I start riding it. But when I ride this bike, it doesn't hold me back. Even the way it sounds, it's just intoxicating with this wings exhaust. It's the most well-balanced and highest performing overall motorcycle that I've ever ridden or tested. 
and I'm not just saying that because you know because I bought this bike that's why I bought it like this this thing cost I'm not even gonna say what I had to pay for this bike because it's a limited edition and they don't sell them anymore and there's only 200 in the US but I can tell you that whatever that high price was it was worth every penny for me because I've never ridden an adventure bike that has anywhere near this level of performance like not even close like not not even close the the, the second closest thing is just a 790 or 890 the standard r model not the rally that's the next closest thing say what you will about ktm and some of their reliability and, and quality control issues and those things are real but as a bike that i'm going to get excited to go ride this is unlike anything else in the world, and, and that's why I have it. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Oh my god. Sadly, there's just not many motorcycles anymore in the world that can get me excited about riding. This thing truly gets my heart racing and I just always can't wait to get on, jump on this thing and ride it. It's it's a special privilege, it's a special experience. Um, it's so emotionally involving and it's so capable. Uh, I can forgive everything else wrong about it. The high price, the reliability issues. Um, like. I don't even care about all that. It's so good that I don't even care about that stuff. That's how good it is. So because of how good this bike is off-road, you would think that there's like some kind of compromise like on the highway, right? But I've been riding this bike for like a month and I, I just can't, I can't find the downsides. I mean, the wind buffeting is better than most adventure bikes I ride. It's pretty smooth. I do have this visor thing. Uh, it's, I mean, the engine's smooth, 65, 70 miles an hour. You've got cruise control, it doesn't vibrate. It has a ton of power. Uh, it ha they say 105 horsepower, it feels like more than that. Uh, I mean, it rips. It's, uh, the brakes are super good. It feels like it weighs like 300 pounds. You know, not, not 470 pounds. The quick shifter is like absolute butter. So smooth. I mean, I, I wish I could find something negative to say about this bike other than the price, the lack of availability, some of the reliability issues. So yeah, those are big deals, I guess. But beside that, actually riding the bike is unbelievable especially for me because I get to ride everything else you know I'm spoiled right and there's just nothing that nothing that does it for me like this this is the right bike for me the right adventure bike for me it's comfortable like there's a ton of leg room the ergonomics are perfect um, I could ride it all day this is more comfortable than I think it's more comfortable than my Africa twin I don't know why but it just is so how does the 890 rally handle the twisty mountain road? Well, you guessed it. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> this thing absolutely flies. It's like a scalpel. And this is a 21 inch front tire. I have knobbies on this bike. Oh, that quick shifter sounds so good when it blips like that. Listen to the downshifts. It's like riding a giant super motorbike with a hundred horsepower. That's 
that's the way it feels. God, that it sounds perfect with the wings exhaust. Cut up to the guy in the Ram TRX. That's a pretty badass truck. Pardon my French. What is that, like 700 horsepower or something? That thing's insane. All right, so what are my brutally honest pros and cons to the 890 Adventure R Rally? And most of what I'm about to say would also apply to the standard 890 Adventure R. So the number one pro to me on this bike and the major selling point of going for the rally is the suspension. The WP Pro cone valve forks and the special rear shock that they have here. It has a ton of travel. It's plush over small bumps, but it's incredibly supportive when you hit stuff fast. And it allows you to ride the bike almost as fast as you want. And the suspension supports you and allows the tires to stay in contact with the ground and allows you to control the motorcycle. And it's quite simply one of the best suspensions I've ever ridden on any motorcycle, period. Definitely the best adventure bike suspension. Now, it's exorbitantly expensive, right? The suspension, this WP Pro stuff, if you're to upgrade your Adventure R to this or your Norton 901 or whatever, it's like 7,000 or more dollars by the time you're out the door, maybe even more than that, to buy these components. So it should be good because it's incredibly exorbitantly expensive and that's prohibitive for most people, I get it. For me, you know what, it's worth it. Uh, I love it and it's kind, of a, it's kind of a killer feature on this bike. Now, what if, you have, what if you're looking at a standard 890 Adventure R, which you probably are because these rallies aren't for sale anymore. Even the suspension on the 890 Adventure R is the best in the class of all the mid-size adventure bikes. It's probably maybe the best suspension of any adventure bike period at any class right now. Uh, KTM does a great job with this. They tune their stuff off-road. They have really good test riders, really good engineering in that regard. Um, so, yeah, I think the next closest bike, uh, the Touareg 660 is pretty good. There's other bikes that are good, but these KTM suspensions, man, they're just so dialed in. Another pro to me for the 890 Adventure platform is the electronics and traction control rider aids. So the way that they've implemented the traction control in the rally mode, so you can select from levels one through nine of traction control intervention as you're riding, that's very unique. I think the only other motorcycle maybe to have that would be the Touareg 660 that I can think of. Go into slip level eight to give me a little bit more tra traction control, and uh, we're just gonna go. Yeah, boy, <laughs> get get it, get it. I didn't die. Oh, oh so much better in, in level eight. Oh my God. So I actually read the KTM manual last night and it says for steep, like rocky, loose rocks, use number seven through eight or even nine. Um, and that turns out to be true. What do you know that they actually studied this stuff? Oh shit, Jeff made it too. Awesome. Yeah. So how was Ophir Pass, Mr. Jeff? That was probably probably one of the most challenging rides I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. A, that's probably a little tougher than section one of California. Yeah, that that's those rocks are insane. Yeah. That lasts like few hundred yards. Yeah. Holy smoke! I mean, you're just riding, you're just riding on this on this like loose jagged shale, like this. All this stuff is just loose. You know. It's like you're on a tile roof trying to walk up it sliding down. Yeah. <laughs> The reason for it is that you can get uh, up a steep hill out of slippery situations, mud, snow, ice, uh, sand. There's a setting for each of those conditions that allows you to, you know, uh, go through terrain that you might not think possible. When you have 105 horsepower, traction control is very helpful. And for old school riders who think, oh, you don't need that, just turn that off. Sorry, that's dead wrong. And I could talk about this for a long time, probably should have a dedicated video to it. But anyway, going back on track, the way it's implemented on this bike is amazing. Also the ABS settings, how you can tune that in, uh, the way you switch the ride modes, uh, 
it's very well implemented and I think the best of any adventure bike and I think I've tested them all at this point. The next pro is definitely the handling. So the way they designed this kind of quite frankly ugly fuel tank uh, with the gas down low here and they centralized the engine down here as well. They put the, they centralized the mass of the bike around the roll axis of the bike. So when it rolls over, I think, I don't know if that's the right physics way to describe it, but, but that's what I've heard. That's kind of what, what, how I, how I understand it. What you need to know is the bike is agile. It, it turns on a dime off-road and on road. And it's one of the best handling multi-cylinder adventure bikes out there. It just, it just works. And KTM really worked their magic on that design. The next pro for me is the engine power. Uh, although I don't like really the sound of the engine, how it's kind of rattly, especially at idle, it doesn't seem that refined. This thing goes. I mean, this thing will, will haul, like it's serious. And I, you know, I just got done testing the Ducati Desert X, which is a great machine. But this, even though that Ducati has more horsepower on paper, I think this bike's faster. Like this accelerates harder. They really are good with their engine power, man. It's exciting to ride. And that brings me to the next point, which is fun. So, you know, I have motorcycles. I ride motorcycles for joy, excitement, the adrenaline of riding. I want to feel those chemicals in my brain. This bike does that for me. And I can't say that about all the other adventure bikes that I'm lucky enough to ride. So all bikes have downsides, all bikes have warts. What are the downsides to the 890 Adventure platform in general as I see it? Uh, for me, I'll just be honest going through these. For one, it's the styling. I don't like the way they look. I think they're kind of ugly, but you know, to each his own on that. In particular to this rally model, the seat height is a real issue because it has a taller suspension and because it comes with that tall seat, although I've changed that, the bike's very tall. Uh, but even with a standard 890 Adventure, it's still a fairly tall bike, but it's, I guess it's competitive with everything else in this class. Just make sure to kind of test that out in the showroom before you go ahead and buy one. A particular con to the rally model is the price, right? Um, these bikes were expensive when they were new, these rallies, and they're expensive Frankly, they even sell over MSRP now as used bikes if they're in really clean condition like this one was. Uh, but what you're paying for a lot there is the suspension. And if you were to actually do the math and look at buying an 890 Venture R, upgrading to this wheel set, upgrading to the suspension, you'd actually be in it. You'd actually probably spend more money doing that than they charged you the $20,000 for the rally. So actually, I guess value is not bad. Value and price are different. It's a good value, in my opinion, but the price is still high. Another thing I don't like about the bike, I hate the clutch. I, I'm really gonna have to do something about it. I don't like the way it engages. I don't like the cable clutch. All my other bikes have hydraulic clutches. My GS is hydraulic clutch. My 690 is a hydraulic clutch. My 350 EXC is hydraulic. Why is this cable clutch? It feels like crap and it do, it's not consistent as you're riding. It, it changes the engagement point. I, I, can't, I can't stand it. So I'm probably gonna have to upgrade it to a hydraulic clutch, which I did see they do offer in the aftermarket. So that's something I'm gonna be doing if I keep this bike. I've kind of mentioned this before in my videos about this bike in the Nord, and I don't like the way the engine sounds. It sounds like it's got rocks in the engine, and I, I just don't like it. I'm sorry. They should just fix that and make it sound more refined. They just, they just, they, they need to address it. And finally, of course, kind of the elephant in a room with these bikes is the reliability. And I, I'm telling you right now, it's a real, it's a real thing. It's a real issue. And uh, I like KTM's. They're fun to ride. They perform well. Uh, do they have some issues with the reliability? Yes, can I prove that scientifically with data? Not really, uh, but go on social media, go on the forums yourself. Now, a couple things to keep in mind, people go to the internet usually to complain, they go there to find issues to their problems, so it, it exaggerates problems. But yes, uh, these bikes, uh, <laughs> there's been engine failures, there's been clutch failures, there's been brake failures. Another thing, and my bike has this problem, they don't like to start on cool mornings. If it's below 50 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the bike takes like six or seven times to start. It's stupid. They haven't fixed it after three years of having this, this platform out, the 790 slash 890 platform, a bike that won't start in the morning, come on. Or it starts and runs really roughly on one cylinder. It's unacceptable and they don't have a solution for it yet. And that's just dead wrong. So I'm sorry, they need to address that. Okay, so the KTM 890, one of the things that they often have is they don't like to start in the morning. It's not that cold. It was probably 45 degrees overnight. So I've tried to start it three times now and it just coughs and dies. So let's keep trying. But I want to show you guys what this does. So I just hit the start a button. And just, it's, uh, you know, it just dies out. And you can hear it runs very rough, like it's running on one cylinder. The 
the reliability issues that you see, they are real. That being said, a lot of people ride these bikes for many, many tens of thousands of miles and don't have many issues at all. For someone like me, I think I'm pretty honest about the issues that they do have, but I still own it because nothing else for me is as capable or as fun to ride, and I'm just willing to make that trade-off. Final thoughts on the KTM 890 Adventure Rally. So whether you get a standard 890, an Adventure R, or if you're lucky enough to grab one of these rally models, you're gonna have a fun time riding it. And in terms of off-road capability, as I've talked about through this whole series of videos, it's incredible. It's the best adventure bike, big adventure bike, if you wanna ride aggressively off-road, period, end of story. However, I've talked about the issues. Uh, it's not the most refined bike. You have the reliability concerns. So you have to put all that on the scale and decide if this bike is right for you. There's a reason that I own this bike and it's to do with the fun and the capability. And I feel very lucky to have it. And the suspension, the suspension is the number one important thing to me on any motorcycle. And this bike gets that perfect. So if you have questions, comments about, about all this, put them down below and we'll get to that in the comments section. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please support Big Rock Moto. And there's ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, ride safe and I'll see you out there.